Hello and welcome to another Doctor Who review. In today's Doctor Who review, I'll be reviewing the Macra Terror. Yes, there is such thing as Macra. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, that, that was terrible. Don't do that again. Yeah, hello. Yes, today I'll be looking at the Macra Terror Steel Book, which has just been released. Bit of an odd choice when you think about it, because obviously Evil of the Daleks threw from the deep. Instead, we have the Macra Terror. A story what I've had a really odd fascination with since 2012. The story what you just think, my god, I really want to experience it. And now we finally can. It's been all four parts have been animated. And it's finally here for us to enjoy. Because like I said, there is such thing as macra. So the way this video is going to work is I'm going to show you the presentation for the steelbook. Yeah, I'm putting the steelbook. <laughs> then I'm obviously going to review the macra terror. And then I'm going to talk about the special features, which I'll do a little mini review of the Wheel in Space episode one. And then I'll quickly talk about Gridlock, because obviously this includes Gridlock. So basically the Steelbook has the complete macro years. If this was a VHS, this would be called the complete macro years. Uh, so yeah, that's the way this is going to work. As obviously I'm going to show you the presentation. Then we're going to talk about Macro Terra, give it a review. Then the special features. Then we're going to talk about Gridlock. And then obviously my overall thoughts on this release. Without further ado, let's get cracking. So taking a look at the presentation for the Macra Terra Steelbook. So we have this nice sort of mine background and then we have the sort of shadow of the Macra itself there which is done rather nice and we have the TARDIS there and then we have a bit of a sticker what I've just kept off the cellophane which says include Steelbook exclusive bonus disc then the J card Doctor Who the Macra Terra then the side of the release there which is all very nice with this nice red tinge. Um, so if you remove the J and card. And the back of the J card there. So if you want to know more about the Macro Terror, then do feel free to pause. Then we have the special features and the Steelbook exclusive extras. Ooh, you can see the bit of the red effect there. And again, the spine, which is done rather nice. Then the back, we've just got a bit of the Macro Shadow there with the claw. Um, so if we just open it up, then you can see the full image of the cover, which you can see there, but I just love that whole red tinge to so it, I think take that's a look rather at the nice. Now the discs are exactly the same for all three discs, basically the same artwork as the cover, so we have uh, disc one, which is basically the colour version with special features, then disc two is the black and white version, then disc three, which is the only difference between the DVD and Blu-ray, is you get gridlock and the Doctor Who Confidential, and I think a commentary as well, so there we go. And once you've removed the discs, you're greeted with a lovely picture of the colony We do itself. get a bit of paperwork. We do have advertising for Doctor Who Titan Comics if you're interested. And of course, we do have the booklet, which is exactly the same as the DVD and Blu-ray. So if we open up, this is what the DVD and Blu-ray artwork is. Um, so if we open it up, uh, we have production notes there and sort of the original concept for the macro, which looks like a bit like a hermit crab, doesn't it? Then we have some of the animation details there and a bit of production information like I said and then we have the special features which we'll talk about in a minute and then that's the booklet and then we have the sort of credits there as you can see. That's so what I'm opening there. thoughts on the Macro Terror? Well I have to say I really enjoyed it. It was a good solid trout and story with this very much being the second Doctor equivalent to the Happiness Patrol. Uh, now the animation if you're expecting this to be 100% faithful to the original story then you probably best get that idea out of your head and uh, you, you, you're probably best sticking to the reconstruction because the animation team have taken a few artistic liberties which in my opinion play to the animation strengths. You know, that's where I feel Power of the Daleks failed because it was trying to be faithful to the original story where um, you were left with noises and nothing happening on the screen, it was just rather static. Now the animation for the Macro Terror on the other hand is utterly brilliant. Now the artistic liberties within the Macro Terror really help the story's ideas shine through even more with the Macro being one of the major liberties taken as they come across as a genuine threat instead of this lump of fiberglass with the new Macro having a sort of a spider-like quality with their movement making them rather unsettling seeing them scuttle around and the, the animation overall is very solid since it's not being restricted to the original story with us getting exterior shots of the colony and this animation really shows, you know, look, this is what we can do in animation. This is a massive step up from Power of the Daleks and Sharda. This is definitely the best animation this animation team have done. So let's get on to the actual story itself. Part one. So carrying on with the artistic liberties, you are greeted with a stunning shot of the TARDIS in space with us getting the end of the moon base animated, which... When you watch the colour version you think, oh, I've put the wrong disc here. Soon as the titles burst on our screen, you're greeted with the lovely colour title sequence, which is very much 
you know, if Troughton stayed for season seven, we're matching the same colour scheme as the Pertwee. Now, part title one really does have a fantastic atmosphere to it, uh, with its, with us seeing the sort of empty colony, which I presume it was sort of curfew time, and it has this sort of heartbeat throbbing sound, which I guess you could perceive as sort of the macro heartbeat, because as as a way. The macro are the heart of the colony, they're the ones that keep the colony functioning. So I thought that was quite a nice little touch to have this sort of heartbeat throbbing sound uh, throughout the colony to sort of allude to that. Uh, so this part really just said that the colony as is, as being this bright and happy place with, with cheery music about work, with, which really shows well in the colour version because it's all bright and colourful and it just matches this sort of happy atmosphere, which I don't feel like you quite get in the black and white version, which is not a dig. Um, I just feel like the atmosphere was done better with the whole happy cheeriness in colour. But it's not all songs and happiness as we have Medoc, who knows the truth and really builds a fear fact and hints at the macro with the, with the colony wanting to silence him. So colonists do not question their lifestyle. So, so we have throughout this part of the story the Doctor being curious by Medoc and, and I love the attention to detail with the prison cell what Medoc's kept in with the writing on the wall saying Medoc was right and macro exist and the cliffhanger is really traditional classic Who monster reveal. Overall, this part I did find a little bit jarring. Um, that could be down for me getting used to the animation, um, which is probably a likely factor. Or the other reason is knowing that certain bits had been cut. Obviously, the rough and tumble machine had been cut from episode one, where we see the Doctor and Gang get all pampered, which I understand why it's not in there, because obviously cost reasons, why would you, you know, make... Um, new character designs for them for, to literally be on screen for like 30 seconds um, hence why Polly has her short hair um, at the start of the story instead of getting it midway through episode one so I can understand why the rough and tumble machine was cut out um, but yeah I think maybe if you haven't seen the Macro Terror before you'll be absolutely fine I think if you're familiar with the reconstruction or the soundtrack then you might be a bit oh wasn't there a bit there you know it's it's not a major negative and I understand why it's not in this because of cost reasons but still it could be that reason why I found it a little bit jarring. Part 2, now this part continues to build what episode 1 does with us learning more about the colony, with us getting the history and its values, you know, virtues of healthy happiness, um, which is a bit of a mouthful isn't it, and learning about the gas, oh yes the gas is the main thing about this story and we do have some nice bits of humour involving the door, now this part is when we start to see the scale of the corruption with the Doctor really starting to question the colony with, with the ever looming control watching over the colony with them starting to brainwash the companions to become members of the society and we see the conditioning process which I will say the music within this part um, does feel very psychedelic which really does help some of the scenes. Now, now this episode is where we have some actual surviving footage from and what you see within that surviving footage is not what you get within the animation itself. Again, this is another example of the artistic liberties because obviously Annika Wills flung herself towards the macro prop because it was just a useless thing because it was just a big lump of fiberglass. Um, but you actually have within the animation the macro pick up Polly um, and just see Polly dangling in the in the air with the macro claw. And obviously when control is revealed, um, we see him get strangled by a claw. But actually we see the camera get knocked over. Um, and see him, you know, die off screen. So there are a few artistic liberties within there, and I actually think it works a lot better. The artistic liberties, what they've taken within this, to make the macro seem more of an intimidating threat. Um, now the the ending, I just think, is really cracking stuff, as, as it really shows the manipulation the macro have over this colony. The cliffhanger. I think this is probably my favourite cliffhanger of the story. I just think that it's really. A punchy cliffhanger with us just showing how much control the macro have within part this colony. Three. Now there's not really much to say on this part. Now this part really does benefit um, being in animation as it's basically Jamie wandering around a mine uh, being chased by the macro which is done really well because we see sort of the shadows of the macro just scuttling past and it's done really effectively. So we have the Doctor, Polly and Jamie sent to the danger gas area with Ben being a spy for the pilot. Uh, with this part really showing the hostility of the gas and again another brilliant cliffhanger. Now part 4 is a prime example of what I mean um, when Macro Terror becomes so cheesy it becomes really good. Uh, because I absolutely love the Macro in this part for all the wrong reasons. Not because they're an intimidating threat, it's just because they become very farcical. Um, and they just become, and they just come across rather ridiculous and funny how they just slowly start to lose control of the colony. And the more they lose control, the more ridiculous they get. And it just provides some great funny moments. But speaking of 
actual funny moments what are meant to be funny not monsters what shouldn't really be funny but just come across funny but the actual funny moments is obviously Jamie doing the Highland Fling which is fantastic but there is a brilliant moment involving the macro when they're not being this very farcical thing and that's the doctor describing the macro and it describes the macro incredibly well and it just shows that the macro are a really good concept um, they're described as being a germ within the human body or like a parasite it's, it's just done really well how they're described and the ending is rather sweet with the second doctor just having a good old time with a funky hat and it's just a great little ending to end and everything's all happy and cheery again but obviously it's cheery for the right reasons because they've got rid of the macra um, so yeah episode 4 is probably a little bit of a highlight because of just how ridiculous the macra become uh, so yeah and I will say this the macra control room within episode just looks stunning. I guess it's what the production team envisioned but they just couldn't afford it because they only had the one macra um, so this is kind of another artistic liberty but kind of what the 1960s crew if they had the money they would have done so it's kind of an envision what they would have done so yeah episode 4 brilliant. Second Doctor played by Patrick Troughton a brilliant performance by him now this story you can tell he's comfortable playing the Doctor because the moon base to me is when he's properly the second Doctor we all, what we all know and love and I just love how he's just constantly rebellious within this story. He's pushing the colony's laws and just being rather curious and fascinated by the technology. And I just love his sheer delight when he solves the equation about the gas. And this story is a classic example of the second Doctor being overlooked by his clownish appearance and letting the foe be foiled by their own means, which I just think is brilliant within this. So I just love the second Doctor within this. It's a great little story for the second Doctor. Polly played by Annika Wills, a great performance by Annika Wills um, and I will say Polly really shines within the latter half of the story with her, with her having some really lovely moments with the Doctor and her being very concerned for Ben and Jamie. In this story we do see her act a bit like the traditional stereotype classic who companion scream and be the damsel in distress um, but yeah I will say Polly overall doesn't get a lot to do but what bits she does have she's rather good at. Ben played by Michael Craze now this is a, a fantastic performance by Michael Craze now this I'm I'm gonna be honest I think this is probably Michael Craze's best performance in Doctor Who it's either this or Power of the Daleks when I feel Ben's characters really utilize well and I think Macra Terra might just have the edge over Power of the Daleks for me slightly because we see Ben uh, become evil and turn against the Doctor and his friends which I think is rather nice to see um, that, but when he's not being all evil and that, we see we do have him being a bit of a joker and being a bit of the action guy, um, really. Jamie, played by Fraser Hines. Again, wonderful performance by Fraser Hines. Very protective of his friends and just feels constantly on, on edge as he knows this place isn't right and he just senses danger everywhere. And like I said, the Highland Fling is definitely a highlight of this story for me. So yeah. Brilliant stuff from Fraser Hines, as always. <laughs> Medoc played by Terence Lodge. Again, brilliant performance as he's constantly on edge like Jamie, but he sort of knows the secret and he's just constantly trying to avoid, you know, the security team because obviously they'll lock him up and condition him or send him to the mines. He's trying, you know, to, you know, get the information out of there that, you know, the colony isn't safe. We're, we're being taken over, you know, we're being brainwashed. It's interesting to see how the story perceives him as this sort of danger to the colony. And I guess he is a danger because he's, you know, he could cause, you know, so a, an uprising. So what are my thoughts on the Macro Terror? Well, like I said, I really enjoyed it. I definitely prefer having it visually. Um, I definitely prefer it to when I listen to it on the soundtrack. Like I said, episode three really does benefit being visual um, instead of just having pictures or just listening to um, the sounds of Fraser Hine just wandering around the mine. Um, but yeah, I really like the story. It has some really great concepts of this sort of constant surveillance that, you know, nobody's safe, you're always being watched and I feel like the macro themselves are a real highlight of this story for me personally um, because they genuinely feel like this ominous threat that they have this colony you know wrapped around their claws um, which I didn't really get the feeling of when I was listening to the soundtrack um, so I feel like whether that's because they look more intimidating or just the way they were uh, directed within this uh, animation I don't know but it was just they just felt more like a threat and yeah, I still love the macro. I still love the whole farcical nature of them within episode four. The more they lose control, the more ridiculous they become. And I just quite like that. Um, Patrick Troughton really does shine within this because it is quite a doctor centric story in a way. Um, yeah, the animation's fantastic. And the artistic liberties, like I said, really play to the animation strengths. It's not trying to be 
you know, 100% faithful to the original. Um, and I think that's a good way of doing uh, these types of animation because obviously Power of the Daleks was a bit clunky because they were trying to keep it as close to the original as possible. So I think that this is a really good example of the animation team going, right, let's just forget about the traditionalness. We're going to keep the story as it is, but we're going to do it in a bit more of a modern way. And I think that it really pays off well. The animation style is really fluid and just great. Um, it's probably my second favorite, second or third favorite animation. It hasn't beat the Moon Base. I think the Moon Base is my favorite animation, but this is becoming very close to it. Um, which version should you watch? <laughs> um, I think that's all up to you. I mean, I personally enjoyed the color version a bit more because, like I said, it really helps the atmosphere and helps the story and the animation come alive a bit more. Um, but obviously if you want to be traditional then you're probably going to want to watch the black and white version. I watch both versions, I watch the colour version for enjoyment reasons and I watch the black and white version when I was doing my notes for the review. Um, and obviously if you want to be 100% purist then obviously watch the reconstruction. Um, but yeah, I, I think that it is a good story. It's not the best Troughton story out there and it's definitely not the worst. It's just a really good solid Troughton story. So I'm going to give Macra Terra a 8 out of 10. Um, and yeah, when, when I finished watching the Macra Terra, I just thought, oh, I really want to watch the Faceless Ones now. It's just It just makes you want to carry on the adventures with the second Doctor and his gang. It's just great. So yeah, I really did enjoy this animation. The story, like I said, it really benefits the animation. Uh, format and yeah I really enjoyed it so let's go on to the special features before we actually talk about the special features on the Macra Terra let's talk about the DVD menu now the DVD menu if you're familiar with the classic series blu-ray box sets then you'll kind of know what you're getting you're basically getting uh, it's basically the same layout and same design it's basically the TARDIS console but it's the 1960s TARDIS console but instead of it moving around the console and being all cool and going, wow, isn't that amazing? You're just getting the image of it. I believe Rob Ritchie, the animator, wanted wanted the time rotor to go up and down and the lights to all flash. But for some reason, it just didn't happen. So just left with the TARDIS hum, which is okay. But when you see it all animated, you're just like, oh, that would have been really nice. Okay, now on to the special features. Now, the special features for this release... Got to be honest, are a bit strange. Um, they are a bit scattered. Um, they're not all the same special features on each disc. They are different, um, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, yeah, and I think that this is a this is a little bit disappointing. The special features, and this is kind of a common theme for the most recent DVD releases. Um, I think maybe because we're so used to the classic series Blu-ray box sets, we're so used to having a whole plethora of extras and behind-the-scenes stuff. What we can just enjoy and just go, oh, that was marvellous. This release is kind of lacking on special features because the one thing I look forward to on watching a new Doctor Who DVD release of an animated story or a story that hasn't been released before, and that is behind the scenes, getting the cast and crew talking about the production of the story. The Macra Terra doesn't have that. It would have been nice if they just had, you know, Annika Wills and Fraser Hines just sat down for five minutes going, all right, what do you think of the Macra Terra? That would have been really nice, unless they're saving it for the Season 4 Blu-ray, which, fair enough, but surely it would have been nice to include that, or just get the animation team actually to go, yeah, this is what it was like animating the Macro Terror, just something there, just to represent the behind the scenes, really. And um, the closest you get to that is basically a little thing about Shawcraft models. Um, so let's actually go on to the, the special features themselves. So we have audio commentary with Toby Hayduck and Fraser Hines, and the person who played Medoc and one of the dancers and the director, which was recorded back in January this year. Um, now the bonus mini episode. Now this is basically the Wheel in Space episode one cut into 10 minutes funded by the BFI. Now that's kind of strange that the BFI said, right, let's animate 10 minutes of the Wheel in Space, um, which I find quite odd because surely you'd want to animate the rest. I mean, watching the 10 minutes of it, it's made me want them to animate the Wheel in Space because it just looks absolutely stunning. Um, and I feel like it works very well as a 10 minute episode because the episode one is essentially, you know, Jamie and the Doctor going, oh, I will miss Victoria. Um, it's very much dealing with the aftermath of Fury from the Deep in that sense. Um, and also it's just, it kicks off with the TARDIS malfunctioning and the Doctor and Jamie just wandering around the spaceship um, being pursued by the Serbo robot who looks very nice. I like him very much. He just looks great. This whole 3D render of me just looks fantastic. 
Um, and he's, he's, a, he's a bit of a cheeky chappy, isn't he? Um, and obviously you see the spheres go off to the wheel and the, the final shot of sort of the window and it just goes into space and you see the wheel itself. It looks stunning and it's made me want to see the wheel in space animated and obviously it needs to be animated just to complete the Cyberman you know, TV story collection. Even though the wheel in space isn't the best story, seeing the animation made me get quite excited and want to re-experience the wheel in space. So uh, yeah, I want to see the wheel in space animated. So yeah, for a little mini episode what they've done, obviously they've cut a few bits out. It works really well as a little mini sode and yeah, I definitely want to see the, the other special space features we animated. have. We have animatics, um, which is basically some scenes showing you how the animation progressed, uh, which is quite a nice little um, feature. Uh, then we have the animation test, where we basically have the storyboards of the animation from episode three, which is quite nice. Uh, then we have the animation gallery, which is basically the pre production of the animation and just sort of the character stills of that. Then we have the teaser trailer. What was first released back last year of just the macro crawling um, and then we move on to disc two and i quite like that they uh, listed the alternative black and white presentation so basically you can watch it in black and white and i find it funny that they've, they've listed it as a special feature <laughs> crazy uh, so special feature wise on that disc we have the audio presentation which is basically that uh the soundtrack by annika wills which again nice little touch then we have the surviving footage um, which obviously we've all seen and obviously when you get it on blu-ray it's been cleaned up and restored and it looks very good uh, Then we have behind the scenes film Which is basically follow that Dalek um, that bit about Shawcraft models. It's basically uh, I think it's Mike Tucker sort of narrating over the follow the Dalek thing talking about Shawcraft models Which is quite fascinating talking about their model process then we have the censored scene which is basically the surviving footage um, Then we have the title sequence because this is the first time where we have the uh, Traditional second doctor title sequence what we all know then we have the photo gallery And then we have some PDF material which is basically the camera scripts and all that kind of stuff so special feature wise It's okay, but I really would have liked to have had you know, behind the scenes of the actual crew talking about the making of the macro tech. Disc 3 is exclusive to the Steelbook. If you get the DVD and Blu-ray, you're just getting the first two discs. Um, now, Disc 3 is essentially gridlock. Um, so if you do get the Steelbook, you're essentially getting the complete macro. Um, and I have to say, watching Gridlock, it's been a while since I watched Gridlock actually, it must be a few years, I really enjoyed it. I think that it's a story, what doesn't interest you as a kid, because obviously it's very static, it's, you know, they're all trapped in cars and not much happens really, but as, as being a mature person, I, I feel like I've matured, hopefully I have, um, I, I've grown to appreciate what it's trying to do, it has some beautiful moments, especially the end scene with the Doctor talking about Gallifrey, uh, Brannigan is a highlight because it's played by the person who played Dougal in Father Ted and he's fantastic um, But yeah, I think that the macro in the story They're okay. It's just kind of a nod of just going here's an obscure monster Okay, let's move on um, because it's it's not really about the macro as such a kind of Everything what the macro terror did with the macro isn't really present within gridlock. It has some nice bits of humor in there but it also has some quite sinister ideas with the whole patch idea. That's quite sinister, isn't it? That you have these sort of pop-up drug shops. It's kind of strange, but yeah, it does have some really great ideas there. Um, it's just a shame, but there's so many things going on within it. But yeah, it's a great story, and I'm going to give Gridlock... I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I think that it's a good, solid story, um, really, from the underrated Series 3. Because Series 3, yeah, it's kind of an underrated series, really, isn't it? Um, so special feature-wise, on disc three, you're basically getting Are We There Yet, which is basically the cut-down Doctor Who Confidential. Uh, this, this is where I go into a bit of a rant. Now, I love Doctor Who Confidential. It's been one of my things I absolutely adore, and I miss it dearly. It was a very much a religious thing. I'd watch Doctor Who, and I'd just quickly turn over to BBC Three. I didn't want to miss Doctor Who Confidential at all. It was a highlight of my week as well as Doctor Who. It was just oh, brilliant. I love it. I just have this weird fascination with behind the scenes stuff, if you can't tell already. And it is the cut down version. Basically what you get on the complete series free, you're basically getting the same. It's not the full confidential. Now I would have loved to have had the full confidential. Um, and, you know, I'd happily pay good money to have the Doctor Who confidential 
in full in a box set. I would happily pay for Doctor Who Confidential in full on a box set. I just really want to have Doctor Who Confidential in its full entirety. I can remember watching it as a kid and just Russell T Davis talking about the macro and just thinking, wow, I really want to see the macro terror. Only a few years later when I found out what it was missing, I was heartbroken. So what are my overall thoughts on the macro terror? Well, I think that it's a very good strong release. It's just a question of whether you want to buy the DVD, Blu-ray or the Steelbook. I feel like if you're a fan of the Steelbooks and obviously do pick up the Steelbook, the Steelbook's a bit of an odd one really, um, because obviously disc free you could consider pointless, but I think it's quite nice just to have the macro complete, you know, in one box and be done with it really. Um, and it's obviously a nice stylish artwork. The artwork I have to say I do prefer over the DVD and Blu-ray just because I just think it looks really stunning. Um, and like I said in my unboxing video, I prefer photo covers for the DVDs just so it matches the other DVDs within the line. Um, so yeah, I would recommend the Macro Terra. I think that it is a good, solid Troughton story. Um, the special features kind of make it feel a bit of a lacklustre release, but I guess they're probably saving that for the season box set. Um, but yeah, the Steelbook I think is priced at £28. It's whether you want to pay you know, the extra 10 quid for the disc, um, but obviously you are getting this lovely presentation because like I said the steelbooks are a nice stylish way of you know collecting blu-rays um, and I'm not really a big fan of blu-ray cases because obviously they're a lot shorter and obviously this it just looks stylish it's compact and it just it's just very nice sturdy little thing steelbooks are really um, so yeah I hope you've enjoyed this video with my review of the Macro Terror and the special features and I'll see you on my next video whatever that will be probably big finish but yeah definitely do recommend the Macro Terror Pick it up, you know, support the animation because if, obviously if you buy it, that means that, you know, you're interested in seeing more Doctor Who animation. So you're funding Evil of the Daleks down the line. That's just an example. Animation wise, what I want to see next is Celestial Toy Maker because I think it will look beautiful in colour. And obviously there's only three episodes to do. So it'll be wonderful to have that um, animated. So yeah, I want to see a Hartnell story next. So yeah, that concludes my review of the Macro Terror. Hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. So thank you very much and... Thank <laughs> you.